Good day students, welcome to mathcodeserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over part three, problems 11 to 15 of the Algebra 2 Regents exam for January 2015. All right, let's take a look at problem number 11. It says, when factored completely, the expression x to the third minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18 is equivalent to. So um, this uh, problem is assessing your ability to factor by grouping, okay? So x to the third minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18. So to factor by grouping, all you simply do here is um, take a look at the number of terms you have. You have four terms. So you can group the first two and the last two uh, in front of this sign, okay, between this sign right here. All right, so from the first two, we'll pull out the GCF. So the GCF of x to the third minus 2x squared is x squared. So you pull out x squared, and you are left with x minus 2, okay? And then on the, on the right side of our partition, we can factor out negative 9. If we factor out negative 9, that will leave us with um, x minus 2. Notice when you factor out a negative from a positive, it becomes negative, okay, x minus 2. Now, you notice that these two quantities are identical, okay, this and this are identical. So, since they're common factors of the um, term to the left and the term to the right, we can factor it out, x minus 2, and we'll be left with x squared minus 9. Okay, so whatever is left on the outside, you bring it together into its own parentheses. Now, we're going to factor further because we have a difference of squares here. How do you factor a difference of squares? If you have a squared minus b squared, to factor a difference of squares, you simply read the first and the last term, and then you express the, it as the sum and the difference of the square roots. So the factored form of this difference of squares here is a plus b times a minus b. Or you can write it a minus b times a plus b. Multiplication commutes, so it doesn't really matter. So let's apply that idea here. x minus 2 is prime. It cannot be factored any further. To factor x squared minus 9, we're going to square root the first and the last term and express it as a sum and difference um, of those roots, okay? So the square root of x squared is x. We have x minus 3 times x plus 3, all right? Our correct answer is option number 2. All right, so for number 12, it says when negative 3 minus 2i is multiplied by its conjugate, the result is so negative 3 minus 2i what is the conjugate here if you have a plus bi uh, the conjugate let's write this down the conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi now what do you do to a plus bi to get a minus bi you simply um, take the opposite of the imaginary part, okay? So it's the opposite of the imaginary part. Do not forget, opposite of the imaginary part. Don't touch the real part now, okay? Imaginary part. Because a complex number in A plus BI form has, this is the real part, and that's the imaginary part, okay? So if we want to find the, the uh, conjugate of negative 3, plus 2i, um, it's going to be, you just take the opposite of the imaginary part, which is negative 3 plus 2i, okay? So let's write this down. The conjugate of three, negative 3 minus 2i is negative 3 plus 2i, okay? Now the problem says, what happens when you multiply this number by its conjugate. So we're just going to multiply negative 3 minus 2i by its conjugate, negative 3 plus 2i. 
So in order to be able to solve this problem, you should know the definition or the meaning of the word conjugate, okay? Now to do this, we'll simply distribute um, or foil out. So first, outer, inner, and then last, okay? Do not forget, note, that i square is equal to what? Negative 1. All right, because the square root of negative 1 is i. Keep that in mind here. So let's go ahead and fold this out. Three, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times plus positive 2i is negative 6i. Negative 2i minus 3i is plus 6i. And negative 2i plus 2i is negative 4 i square okay now the two terms in the center are opposite so they add up to zero so we are left with nine minus four now i square is what i square as indicated here is negative one so to simplify this we are going to have nine plus uh four because uh, minus times minus is plus nine plus four is thirteen the correct answer is option number four. That's the product of this number and it's conjugate. All right, let's take a look at number 13. It says a circle with center um, O and passing through the origin is graphed below. Okay, so this is a graph. The question is, uh, what is the equation of circle O? So in order to do this problem, you have to remember the um, the form of the equation of a of a uh, of a circle basically the um, standard form of the equation of a circle so the standard form of the equation of a circle is x minus h square plus y minus k square equals r square okay where the center is hk and the radius is r. Okay, so in order for us to generate the um, equation of the circle in standard form, we just need to know what the center and the radius are. Okay, so this is one negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. It's negative four. This is one, two, positive two. So the center O is negative four, two. Okay, so that follows that H is negative 4 and K is what? K is 2. What else do we need? We need the radius. Okay, so the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circumference. So we can go, um, let's count to the right horizontally. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, like 4.5, okay? So 4.5. That's, a, that's, that's an approximation because I don't know exactly what it is. But that's sufficient for us to find the correct answer. So what I'm going to do is take HK and R, which is around 4.5. I will substitute these values into your standard form of the equation of a circle and see which option we get. Okay, so we have, uh, let's write that down again, X minus H square plus y minus k square equals r square. So we have x minus h is negative 4, so minus negative 4, plus y minus k minus 2 square equals 4.5 square. That's r square, okay? And then uh, when we simplify this, this is a square here, forget that. We'll have x plus 4 square plus y minus 2 square equals 4.5 square is 20.25, so equals 20.25. All right, so the closest answer to the option we have here is option number 4. Okay, so that is the um, equation of this circle right here in standard form. All right, let's take a look at problem number 14. It says, which expression is equivalent to 5 to the negative 2, a to the third, b to the negative 4, or raised to the negative first power? 
okay? So let's go ahead and write that down. 5 to the negative 2, a to the third, b to the negative 4, raised to the negative 1. All right, so we're going to be using the power of the product of powers property of exponents to simplify this. That will be our first step, okay? So that just involves simply distributing the power to the power of the product of powers, okay? So you just take negative 1, distribute it to the powers, okay? Just multiply it to every single power of all the powers, every term in the parentheses, okay? Okay, so if we do that, we have 5 times 5 raised to the negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. A to the 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. B to, to the negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. Okay, now we can use the reciprocal property to simplify um, this term here with a negative exponent. 5 squared is 25. 25b to the fourth over a to the third. That's your final answer, okay? And our answer is option number two. All right, let's take a look at uh, problem number 15. It says, which trigonometric expression does not simplify to one? Okay, so let's see which trigonometric expression does not simplify to 1. All right, so if you think about your Pythagorean identities, um, the trig version, this is an identity most students um, remember. So we're going to do a real quick review on our identities here. Review on identities. Okay, so let's see. We all know the Pythagorean identity sine square x plus cosine square x is equal to 1, all right? So what does this follow? This tells us that if we subtract um, sine square x from both sides, we're going to have cosine square x is equal to 1 minus sine square x. So let's keep this in mind, okay? Now let's go back here. We have sine square x plus cosine square x equals 1. Now, what if I divide everything by, uh, let's divide it by sine. What if I divide everything by sine? If I divide this by sine, actually sine square x, divide this by sine square x, and divide this by sine square x, what do I get? I, uh, this um, becomes, <clears throat> this becomes, um, Sine square x over sine square x is 1, so 1 plus cosine square x over sine square x is cotangent square x, and 1 over sine square x is what? Reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so it's equal to cosecant square x. So we have another identity, okay? Let's just keep track of our identity so we don't lose them. So this is identity number 1. A uh, variation of this one right here, and this is another identity we got by dividing this parent identity by sine square x. Uh, now, how about we go ahead and um, divide this by cosine? Okay, so we have let's move it here a little bit. Sine square x plus cosine square x equals one. So if you divide every single term by cosine square x, cosine square x, cosine square x, cosine square x. Guess what happens? This becomes sine square x over cosine square x is tan square x because tan is sine over cosine, okay? Cosine square x over cosine square x is 1, and then 1 over cosine square x is secant square x. All right, so tan square x plus 1 is equal to secant square x. So we see this identity right here. We have tan square x minus 1. you got to be careful. It's supposed to be plus 1. But what does this uh, identity tell us? If we go ahead and um, subtract 1 from both sides, we'll end up with the identity tan square x equals 
secant square x minus 1. Okay? And that's another identity that we're going to be using uh, in this problem. All right? So just by inspection, check this out. Uh, 1 minus sine square x. You see this business right here? This one can be replaced with cosine square x. And cosine square x is a reciprocal of secant square x. So they both cancel out to 1. So this is good. And then 1 plus cotangent square x, you see it right here. You can replace that with cosecant square x. But that's a reciprocal of sine, so they cancel out to 1. Okay, and then tans, uh, here you have secant square x minus 1. That's the same thing as tan square x, the reciprocal of cotangent square x. They cancel out, and they, that's equal to 1 also. Okay, all right, so I just went over it mentally. Now let me go ahead and show you the work. Okay, so option one, we have sine square x times 1 plus cotangent square x. Okay, using this identity right here, let me number, enumerate them. So let's call this identity 2, 1, and 3. So using identity 2, we can write this as sine square x times cosecant square x. But we know that sine, the uh, cosecant is a reciprocal of sine, so this is equal to sine square x times 1 over cosecant square x. And guess what? They all multiply to 1. Okay, so this option number 1 is good. Option number 2, we have secant square x. Secant square x times 1 minus sine square x. That equals, now we're going to use identity number 1. See this one we got right here? But how, how are we going to use it here? We are going to replace 1 minus sine square x with cosine square x. You see that? But we know that cosine, if you reciprocate cosine, you get secant, right? So the same applies to its square. So secant square x times cosine square x can be expressed as secant. Um, I'm sorry, the reciprocal of secant square x. And if you divide this out, secant square x goes in 1, secant square x goes in 1. And final answer is 1. Check. That's good. Okay? And then number three is going to be a fail. So you can, we have cosine square x times tan square x minus 1. This one, there's nothing you can do with it because tan square x is none of, it doesn't match with any of these identities. Tan square x plus 1 is good, but tan square x minus 1, you cannot apply an identity to it. So this answer is wrong. Okay, so you can verify the fourth one by yourself. You see that it's correct. Also, just take secant square x minus 1, replace it with tan square x, express that as a uh, reciprocal of this, cancel out and get 1. So option 4 is, is good also. Okay, the only one that's wrong is option 3. So the one that does not, remember it does not, the one that does not simplify to 1 is option number 3. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you found this um, tutorial helpful or beneficial, uh, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Um, positive feedback. Um, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. If you have any questions about um, any questions on the Algebra 2, Algebra 2 um, Regents exam, just put uh, place a question in the comment section below and uh, we'll be glad to answer it as soon as possible. More clips can be found on mathgoodserve.com on the test prep. Just click on um, New York Regents and you can gain access to many years of review material to help you pass your Algebra 2 Regents exam. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.